Hi, welcome to the section of the Matrix Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to tackle the topic of what's called Kramer's Rule. And it's just a uh, method of solving systems of equations that uses determinants. That's really all it is. So we've learned lots of different things in this class. We've learned about the row reduction. We've learned about how to, add, how to multiply matrices. We've learned how to do the Gaussian elimination, the Gauss-Jordan. We've learned about inverses and how to use inverses to solve systems. We've learned about determinants. Now we're finally going to use determinants to solve systems. It's just another trick in your tool bag. Sometimes it'll be more advantageous to use this over another, over another uh, method. So the easiest way to do it is just to dive into what Kramer's rule is. It's not very hard. Basically, you're going to calculate a few determinants and start dividing them by one another, and then you're going to find the answers to the uh, variables you're trying to solve for in the system. That's basically what Kramer's rule is, okay? So let's say uh, for a two-variable system, in other words, a simple system with x and y, because we always start off with, it, with two variable systems to make it easier to understand, uh, then what you would have in general, if you were going to write down your equations, okay, uh, without putting numbers there, what you would see in your book a lot of times, a1 times x plus b1 times y equals c1, okay? And you might also see a2 times x plus b2 times y plus, I'm sorry, equals c2. All this means is instead of giving you an exa example with numbers, you just start by having letters. So you have a number in front of x, a number in front of y, a number on the other side of the equal sign. The twos and the ones just mean they're different numbers. So this is a different number, a different number, a different number. It's just a general way of writing down the system. Okay? So what you need to do to understand Kramer's rule is you have to make some definitions. Uh, so I'm going to define the following things. And I'm not going to prove Kramer's rule to you. It's just like everything else in the world. Uh, at this level, I mean, you learn it, and, and you're not always given the proof of it. I mean, it's, it, that would just bog us down to no end, okay? So, what I'm going to define is a determinant called big D. And that determinant is going to be the determinant of the coefficients on the left-hand side. So, it's the determinant of A1, uh, B1, A2, and B2. Basically, it's the determinant of kind of what you would expect you'd take the determinant of the left-hand side here, okay? That's called D. No, no big problem here so far. I'm just defining the determinant of the left side of the matrix. And you know how to calculate that uh, using your little x there, okay? Now, also, I'm going to calculate, or I'm going to define, actually, D sub x, determinant with a little sub x here. And that's going to be defined as, you basically take your, your D that you defined here, and because because you're defining sub x, here are the coefficients, the a's are the coefficients in front of the x. So wherever these are, you replace them with what's on the other side of the equal sign. So you're going to have c1, c2, b1, b2. And you define that, and you calculate this determinant, you call it d sub x. The reason, again, it's sub x is because the a's here are the coefficient in front of the x's. You replace these with what's on the right-hand side of the equal sign. This stuff stays the same. You also define a d sub y which is a similar thing. Uh, you have a1 here and you have a2 here, but the coefficient of b here is in front of the y, so you replace these guys with what's on the other side of the equal sign, c1 and c2. Okay? So once you get past wrapping your brain around that, the actual math is not that hard. You have to define a d, which is this determinant over here. d sub x replaces these coefficients with what's on the other side of the equal sign. d sub y replaces these coefficients with what's on the other side of the equal sign. You calculate three different determinants. Okay? So then, the grand finale of all this stuff is very simple, actually, once you calculate these determinants. The value of the variable 